Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Have we lost the ancient grandpa, grandma wisdom to this technologically advanced generation? Have the next generation suffering as a result? Don't touch that remote. I'll be right back to tell you all about it. Get ready to find hope. Get ready to be inspired. Get ready to discover your full potential. Get ready for total success from the Total Success Coach, Princess Bola Adelani. This is Princess Bola Adelani, the Total Success Coach, welcoming you to Inspired Success, your monthly dose of inspiration, power, the program that equips you with the power and inspiration for total success. That is success at work and in life. And yes, it's been just a month, a little over a month, when our, the, our children went back to school, teens went back to high school, everyone back, back to college, you know, back to school, just a bit over a month. And um, if you're like me, a concerned parent, and um, you're probably, you know, concerned and worried, and you're probably asking yourself, you know, so these questions, how can you raise, how can you empower, you know, the next generation? And uh, my question today is, have we lost some of this practical um, ancient wisdom, you know, grandpa, grandma wisdom, you know, to this technologically advanced um, modern world that we live in? And are the kids, are the next generation, the millennials in particular, are they suffering as a result? You know, and that is what's going to form the basis of our conversation today on inspired success. And I have in the studio with me, you know, um, two experts in different fields. Um, one is a social worker and one is a high school teacher. And um, they're going to be joining me in this conversation. And, and, and we're going to be, you know, brainstorming ideas and strategies of how to really empower the next generation. And so with great pleasure, I want to ask that you will join me to welcome to Inspire Success, Daniel Blatchard, who is also an author. Um, welcome, Daniel. Well, thank you, Principal. Bowler. And uh, seated next to um, um, Daniel is um, Lorna. Everybody in West Hartford or Greater Connecticut knows, knows <laughs> Miss Lorna Little. You know, I was just saying, you know, we are having a conversation before the show kicked off about how she's this high profile exposure. You know, I use that word, <laughs> giver, you know, but you're, she's very well known on a serious mm -hmm. note, very active in the community, always supporting events and things like that. And, you know, I really, really, with great pleasure, welcome you, um, Lorna, to Inspire Success. Thank you very much for having me, Princess Paula. And Lorna also happens to be the executive director of St. Agnes Home, yes. which is a home, you'll be talking a bit yes. more about it in, in the broadcast, which is a home based in... In, in West Hartford, Connecticut, um, for well, young teen, mothers and children, yeah, yes, 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 and mothers and children. You tell us a little bit more about it. So let's dive into this conversation right away because we do not have too much time, you know. And I've actually decided that this will be kind of like a series, you know, mini series that I'm going to do because I'd like to hear from the next generation, and then I'd like mm -hmm. to bring everybody together and have like an intergenerational conversation, you know. So, but I want to you, I wanted you guys to kind of kick this. Uh, because you're experts, you know, like I said, in, in, in this, in the industry where you actually, uh, through your job, work with, um, with teenagers, you know. And so my question is, uh, are they lost? Uh, have, we, have we lost them? Have we mm -hmm. lost them? Would you, what would you say, Dan? Well, first of all, I'd say that that's a very good question and a somewhat loaded question. In some ways, we, we have lost them, but I don't think we've 
totally lost them. Okay. I mean, as as adults looking at today's youth, yes. you know, sometimes we look at them, we're like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? Yes. You know, but when I think about it, if we go back, I mean, the adult population did that to us. Yes. When we were young and somehow we turned out okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm assuming somehow they're going to turn out okay, <laughs> they're gonna right? They're going to be fine. <laughs> so you, you would say that they're not quite. You're not quite. Yeah. And what would you say, I mean, with the rise, yes. I don't know what the statistics are yeah. saying, but there is mm -hmm. definitely a rise in, um, you know, teen suicide, teen yeah. pregnancy, addiction, and, and all these societal things. And... And so what would you say, Lorna? I mean, my answer would be somewhat similar. Um, the reality is that, you know, we're talking to millennials. I'm from Generation X. X. I remember adults being concerned about music <laughs> and all the other things. I do think we've lost some connection with the ability to have that dialogue. But okay. I don't think that the kids are lost. I think it's so important to utilize um, their voice to engage them in this conversation. And, and I don't mean specifically here today, yeah. but to hear way they think and what they think we can do because you know, part of your question as well is, you know, have we failed them? You know, have, yes. and so the other part is, okay, maybe there is something new that we need to do, but I don't think they're lost. I think that they have new skills and new ideas that if we dialogue and work more with them and kind of work for positive youth development, yes. things would be better. But some of it is that some people don't understand. Okay, so maybe they're, maybe they're not lost. Maybe it's more of a communication gap. Yes. You know, maybe it's more of a so, communication, so, yeah. communication, yes, and as well as yes. cultural gap. Yes. And, and like you said, that's why I decided that uh, the third part of this series will be bringing everybody together to have that mm -hmm. intergenerational conversation. Yeah. I really kind of hear it from their perspective. But then, you know, um, the statistics as well do, does not lie. Mm -hmm. There's, there's yeah. been an increase. And so mm -hmm. somewhere along mm -hmm. the line, I think we might have dropped the ball. You know, we might have mm -hmm. lost some, some, missed out on, on some of this ancient wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You know, uh, what's different? And what do you well, think that it is that we're missing? What's the missing link? Well, I think there's quite a bunch of things that are different. Yeah. And... and I mean, if you look at like the countries that don't have all the choice that our young people have, mm. don't have all these things at their fingertips, this technology and this ability to do this or do that, or do this or do that. I mean, those countries seem to have kids that are a little better adjusted to uh, you know their norms of society. Yeah. Whereas with us, we've got so many things that our youth can do, and and we never had the, those that many options. Okay. You know, our parents gave us a couple things. You can, you know, you can go to bed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or you can read. Or you, <laughs> you can read. Saying? Exactly. Exactly. So and it was a lot easier for us. Exactly. And then you mm. didn't have, um, you know, um, the dictionary and autocorrect and everything to help mm -hmm. you. And so I, I hear you. I, I hear you saying that that technological advancement, yeah. while it's a blessing, it's yeah. also a curse. It's a blessing mm. and a curse. Yeah. You know, in some sense, if it's not kind of managed mm -hmm. properly, um, is that what you would say but as to a well? Certain degree, I think yes. the whole concept of kind of instant information, instant gratification, things are moving so quickly and things are at your fingertips. You got it, you have two year olds, you know, playing on iPads and some of that's great, yes. but some of that you know, technology allows us to lose that connection. Yeah, um, the, the choices. Yes. One mm -hmm. of the things that young people need is skill building. Yes. And skill building can only come from technology. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity to have this, that, it's sometimes it's information and choice overload. Yes. It's not that we don't want young people to have choices, but sometimes too much, they're still trying to develop their um, decision-making skills. Yes. And, and we're giving them so too much. much. And their interpersonal skills. Yes. And so, and I think we're mm -hmm. also losing Losing those those inter, interpersonal mm -hmm. skills, and mm -hmm. then of course there's the added danger of the exposure to a whole world social of, media, of social, social media networks. information to to people who prey on those things yes. for the mm -hmm. wrong reasons, mm -hmm. and that soft porn easily available at a young age, mm -hmm. the pedophiles, you know, mm -hmm. and all yeah. of that, and so. Um, but then for us as you know, parents, mentors you know, caregivers, adoptive parents. What are some practical, you know, you, you, you work with young mm -hmm. mothers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Teenage mothers, yeah. more specifically. So, yeah. And so let us talk first about the typical 
girl that mm -hmm. comes into mm -hmm. your home, okay. what are their background like? Mm -hmm. Is there a stereotype yeah. of, you know, the type of person mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. ends up mm -hmm. like that? Well, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, people kind of stereotype, oh, mm -hmm. this person had a child, they must be, quote, unquote, they use the word fast or promiscuous. Yeah. But they don't realize a lot of the girls, especially that come into our home, yes. they've been through a lot of trauma. Many okay. of them have gone through various foster care systems. They've had physical abuse sometimes. They've had emotional abuse. And they've experienced a lot. So when you're looking for love, you're looking for love in sometimes not the right places. And so, so then so they find let me, themselves... Let me just stop there. Stop you there. So are we talking here now as, about some deficiency, quote and unquote, you know, emotionally in the way that they were raised? In the upbringing, maybe absentee parents mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. not having enough love and validation mm -hmm. and uh, parents or, or guardians there are, that are present. There are times that that is the case. Okay. There are times that sometimes there's some emotional issues that are going on. So maybe a parent is there, yeah. but the rebellion and some other things due to other types of abuses. Yes. But there's a combination. But there are some young women there that the situation has occurred and it has happened to them, but it's mm. not something where I think sometimes people have this vision that, you know, this young woman is, you know, here, there, and everywhere, and that is not often the case. Mm. And they have made a choice to have their child and then they come to our door yes. and, and we're there to help guide them with parenting skills, give them information. And some of the young women decide that they would like to place their child for adoption and some want the skills to be able to be able to parent. And yeah. we're there to determine and, on, and support at the same time if they're capable of doing that and help them get to the next level. Absolutely, and you're doing a great job, by Thank the you. way. You're and one thing I do want to mention along with the statistics, ironically, out of all the things you mentioned, everything is on the rise, but teen pregnancy has gone down it over has, the past several has. years. Oh, okay, yes. good. That's yeah, good to hear. That yes, yes. That, yeah. That's good to hear. And what, what would you say is the reason for that? I think it's a combination of factors. Yes, I think yeah. it's the, the various trainings that are out there, the abstinence trainings yes. and other things that are going on in the community. So I think it's a combination. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. And so um, um, Daniel Blanchard is the author of a book called uh, Feeling Lucky, but mm -hmm. is based on granddaddy's secrets, right? True. And, yeah. and, and just um, as a story, tell us a bit more, uh, tell viewers a little bit more about your book and... Um, and you know what inspired you to write your book okay. i know that you're a teacher in the you know one of the inner city yes. schools here in connecticut mm -hmm. and um and of course you work with high schoolers and all that and and so what inspired you to write the book well i'm glad you asked me that question <laughs> Principal, because it's a great story yeah uh back several years ago i spent about a decade listening to my students tell me i should write a book Okay. And it was, you know, it was, it was kind of shocking because I was like, I'm not even a good writer. Yes. You know? And my students are going, I think you should write a book and tell other students, other kids around the U.S., around the world, what you tell us. And, uh, what is it you told them? Well, tell them the, a bit the, about I was, your story. I was very lucky as I was, you know, I'm a history teacher. Yeah. And uh, when I was teaching all those history classes, you know, I would talk about somebody like Rosa Parks. And I would say to the kids, you know, would you have the courage to do what she did. And I'd come out and say, I don't know if I would. I'm a father, I got five kids at home. You know, if I end up in jail, if I end up without a job, how am I gonna feed my kids? And you know, I'm like, I don't know if I have that courage. And, and then all of a sudden that would get them thinking. And they'd go, they'd go, hmm, would I have the courage? So it would be like bringing them above and beyond the facts and dates yes, of history. Yes. And, I would, and then I, I remember your person, I don't mean to cut you as well, you have a personal story as well. Did you kind of, was it that you dropped out of high school and then you came back, went to college as, a, as an adult? T yeah. Tell viewers well, a bit about I, that because I, 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 I think yeah. that is um, okay. I didn't, yes, interesting. I didn't exactly drop out of high school, but it didn't exactly do well either. Okay, okay. When, when I was in high school, pretty much, uh, you know, if I got straight C's, <laughs> occasional D, <laughs> it was passing. And it was enough to still allow me to play sports. Okay. So that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to go to school and play sports. You know, I tell people that I was more of an athlete than a student. So I wanted to go and play sports, I wanted to socialize. And if I could get a date every once in a while, <laughs> I mean, that was great. You know, so when I got out of high school, I didn't have the grades, the test grades, I didn't, I, you know, the colleges didn't want me. You know, so I was like, well, what am I gonna do now? So I went to the army. 
Then Ooh. when I went to the Army, then I eventually ended up in the Air Force after that, so I'm a double veteran, cool. cool. You know, I'm really proud of that. And then I ended up back in college. Uh, and when I, when I went to college, you know, I had to start off small because no college really wanted me. So mm -hmm. I had to start off at Manchester Community College. And when I got to Manchester Community College, you know, now all of a sudden I knew what it meant to work. Yes. You know, with the military, to be disciplined. Yes. I mean, yes. I was always disciplined in sports, oh, yes. but I wasn't disciplined in academics. In academics, yeah. And so now I took the discipline from the military, the discipline from sports, and I just transferred over to academics and found out that it was easier than I thought to be disciplined. And you were doing mm -hmm. better, and then from there you went to uh, university, and then you got mm -hmm. your, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, if you're just tuning in to Inspired Success, today we're talking about whether we've lost the next generation and how to empower them and how to raise and mentor millennials, you know, and just the ancient wisdom. And I have Lorna mm -hmm. and, and Dan in with me in the studio, who's an author. Um, you need to pick up a copy of this book. And one of the things that you've touched upon, one of the principles mm -hmm. is about hard work mm -hmm. and just discipline. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. whether this is, this to me, those, that is ancient wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the ancient wisdom yeah. you and I, yeah. as Generation X, is yeah. Lorna grew up yeah. with, with our yeah. parents, yeah. you know, being immigrants. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I know that yours come from Jamaica mm -hmm. and they had to work hard. And, yes. and you, 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 you some, somehow that kind of passes on, mm -hmm. you know, you observe them and they, they, they yeah. train you and they teach you. But I'm wondering whether I, I'm concerned that we've lost some of those ethics and values yeah. and we want to kind of give our kids everything they need and mm -hmm. I don't know what you know what are some of these wisdom would you say this yeah. ancient grandma grandpa wisdom hard work yeah. good work I mean ethic. a good strong work ethic is definitely something that I learned <laughs> and I witnessed with my parents and, and do some, you think it's lost though I I think in our effort to provide our children with all the things that we may not have mm. received yes. sometimes we do them a disservice yeah so yes. that yeah. That is yes, the truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's up to us to recognize and find a balance. We don't want them to suffer completely, <laughs> but we have to give them opportunities to work and grow. It's back to that mm -hmm. skill building again. Yes. And something you said I think that was important when you talk about young people. You said you went to school, you, you weren't really giving it your all, but then when you went to Manchester after these other experiences, yeah. you were ready. Another thing is everyone is not really there chronological age, so to speak, where yeah. they are emotionally in, match, in, in terms of maturity. So you might have somebody that's 16 and 17 and in high school just kind of yes, getting through, that, that. and they're really more mm -hmm. like 13, 14, can't <laughs> make a decision, can't focus. So the other thing is knowing the young people that we're working with and even and our own where children. They are, they are yes, and emotionally and mentally mm -hmm. and setting the right expectations and, yeah. and the timing in terms of, you know, yeah. so the army was a good season yes. for you to go through yes. and all mm -hmm. of that oh wow um very good very good and then is there anything else that you would also say that you covered in your book that you think might be missing in terms of this um ancient wisdom you know this um uh, grandma yeah, yeah. grandpa secrets that um, we might have lost yeah absolutely i mean when when granddaddy comes back into the teen's life in my story yeah uh, you know granddaddy plants some seeds on what it means to be a real leader mm -hmm. and a real man mm -hmm. and it isn't what he's seen his friends mm -hmm. do it isn't what he's seen on TV you know mm -hmm. the neighborhood maybe even in his own home mm -hmm. it might not be what he's seen in his own home yeah so granddaddy plants the seeds for what it means to be a real leader real man and one of the things he talks about is you got to find mentors you got to find people that are really succeeding yeah. in life and you got to find a way to be around them. And if you can't get around them immediately, pick up books. Start yeah. reading books about successful people mm -hmm. and learn what they're doing to become successful. And, and, and that's how you've touched on something and I think those are just the two two points and tips, the wisdom that we can mm -hmm. really, we have enough time to share today. So if you're tuning in to Inspire Success, it's Princess Bola with um, Daniel Blanchard and uh, Lorna Little. And you, of course, you know where to find more information. If you go on Facebook and um, everywhere else, you'll be able to connect with them. Um, but um, you touched on something else. Is that c sense of community? I feel that sense of community is kind of missing, you know, um, 
it, back in the day, yeah. you grew yeah. up and the grandma was next door and yeah. your cousin was next door and your great aunt was mm. kind of next door. There was more of a greater yeah. sense of community. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, children kind of even, it, they say it takes a village, right? Yeah. And so even if it wasn't you directly, mm -hmm. it was somebody yeah. out there that was kind of, you know, setting them in order, mm -hmm. setting them straight. Mm -hmm. But we're now living in this world where everyone is far removed from everybody and sometimes we don't see each other until thanksgiving maybe once a year mm -hmm. and then people are scared about lawsuits and all that um i remember when my first i think it was the first day of my son in high school i dropped him off and i was turning around and i saw a couple of his colleagues i don't know what they were smoking you know and 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 they were you know mm -hmm. the bell had gone and they were just hanging out there in a corner smoking and doing whatever else they were yeah. doing and automatically was a reflex action. I got to out of my something. car and I said something <laughs> and I said, you better, you yeah. better. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. Uh -huh. You better get to school, you yeah. know. And I was posting on Facebook that yeah. did I overreact? And somebody said she wouldn't have done anything because she'd have been scared that, you yeah. know, they might have reported her. Yeah. Her mom could have come up and yeah. said, you know. And so yeah. I, it just comes back to this kind of losing this sense of community mm -hmm. and where everybody is kind of you know in, in yeah. involved in the raising of 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 the children right uh, yeah is that missing is that something that you say is missing i, I think that you, i'm listening to you there's a, i think there's a couple of sides to it i think people should speak up i mean you you didn't go and abuse them you didn't go and hit them drag no. them out you were a concerned parents that you're concerned about all children and yeah. see that's the thing i'm concerned about all children yeah. so i would share with them i wouldn't be rude but i say do you know what you're missing out on the other yeah. thing is that there's a false sense of community i think that's the thing really because, because people we... feel like well i talk to you every day on facebook i send you a note yeah. i instagram you i do these things mm -hmm. that there's a sense yeah. that we are so connected yeah. but it's not it's real. real. It's not really. It's not as it, yes. yes. I mean, yes. And, and don't get me wrong, they can be some meaningful exchanges. Yeah. But often what I think is that lulls us into not having those actions. Also, people are working longer hours because of the financial situation of many mm -hmm. people, whereas there would be more people at home to yeah. be able to see Johnny and James <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. you know, Deja or whoever it is coming down and not doing what they're supposed to do after school. Well, now everybody's at work. That's and true. so how do you see them when you're not in the community? community. Yes, that's true. That's yeah. a good one. Well, this conversation is to be continued. I mean, uh, we are definitely, definitely not out of words, but um, we're out of time. We're out of time. And um, so we're going to be bringing the pro broadcast to a, a close. So it's it's inspired success and it's it's uh it's about empowering the next generation and how how to raise um you know um a mentor the next generation with just using ancient wisdom so we've touched on two things as we close and so Lorna I know that um, you have a, um, there are a lot of resources that are available you know if you're a parent mm -hmm. you're a caregiver you know or, or adoptive parent or mentor or someone just a concerned member of community who wants to be involved in, yes. in, in this effort of really empowering and equipping and positioning the next generation. The different kind of resources that are really available uh, out there in, in the community. And, and your, 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 your center is, is a resource as yes. far as I'm concerned, yes, yes. because someone might be watching who, who is dealing with that, yes, you know, yes. who is dealing with, with a teenage yes. um, child pregnancy, yes. teenage pregnancy and all that and just need resources. So tell them in, a, a, in one minute, yes. just a bit more where you're, you're okay. located okay. and about your yes. upcoming yes. event. You have this annual event. Uh, yes, That's thank you. Cool. We're so proud that we're celebrating 100 years at wow. St. Agnes Home. Many nonprofits are gone and come and go. Yeah. So we're on October 18th um, at the Marriott downtown Hartford. We're celebrating with Vic Victoria Rowell, who is our keynote speaker. A lot awesome. of people know her. She was yes. in foster care, yeah, yes, and she yes, was Drusilla on Young and the Restless. <laughs> Restless yes, but yes. we're very proud, and we're at 104 Mayflower Street, and so we appreciate West Hartford has been a great supporter for our community, yeah. for our agency. Yeah. So we thank everyone, and thank you 
for helping oh, us. Oh, anytime, anytime. I believe in the work that you do. You do an amazing job. And then you have your book. I understand mm -hmm. this is only the first of you. Um, is this really for the teens themselves? <laughs> Would you say it's more appropriate for us to give out? You know, maybe yes. Lorna can share with and, and, and we can get someone to mm -hmm. donate and purchase a box and, and donate to their home because stories... Yeah. Stories always sell. They stick. Yeah. This is stories stick. Yeah. And so um, so this is more appropriate, I, would you say, I, for the 10th? I wrote it for the teens. It's about the first book is yeah. about a 10th grader. Oh, yeah. The second book I wrote is about a 11th grader. And the third book I wrote is a 12th grader. Okay. But I get emails from all over, all different ages, yes. saying that I read your book and, you know, I'm 70. And <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Yes. You know, or I read my book uh, with my five-year-old daughter. Yes. And my five-year-old daughter loved it. So. And so, where can they, where can viewers pick up a copy? Everywhere yeah. a copy is all, all major, are sold, major like distributors, Amazon, my yes. webpage, Amazon, uh, uh, yeah, your website, yeah, exactly. Website, so, Granddaddy pick Secrets. up a copy, you know, and, and, and just invest. We're coming up to, you know, Christmas season and all of that. Put it in, uh, uh, you know, uh, and just in their stocking and just, you know, encourage someone to read. And then, of course, my, you know, the queen of networking mm. has our event coming up. <laughs> Mm. On October 28th is my birthday edition of Inspired mm. Success. Um, that's uh, October 28th at 5.30 at Atria Hamilton Heights. They're the sponsor and the host. And so I look forward to seeing you there. It's mm. really been a great conversation. Honestly, it, um, time hasn't allowed us to do justice to this. But you, you heard it. I, I think, we, you know, they're not lost. They're not lost, I think. But we can do better. We can yeah. do better in terms of... You know, we can always do better in terms of how we are equipping them and just some of these ethics, ethical um, values that we yeah. we have and make sure we know, we don't we don't lose it, that we pass it on. We pass mm -hmm. it on. You know, like Ilona was saying, in our effort not to want them to suffer and to, to have the things yeah. we missed out on, we mustn't overdo it. And then, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you sharing your story mm -hmm. and just about the time and the season and yeah. uh, for everyone, every child is different. So don't, don't be discouraged if your child isn't so academically um, <laughs> um, advanced or doing well. Now there's still hope, you know, mm -hmm. and so just give every child. They give them the, the the to work at their own pace, the opportunity to work at their own yep. pace, and um, it's been great. And so we're gonna have another broadcast where I want to talk here from from the teens themselves. And then I'm going to bring everybody right. together. Oh. So you're going to be coming back. Yeah, and we're right. going to have a more a town hall and intergenerational okay. type of conversation. And, and let's, let's hear from them. We want to hear from them, right? Yes. We right. need to ha have those conversations. So, well, thank you so much for being here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lorna. Um, and thank you so much for tuning and watching this show. I, you know, I really so appreciate you. It is viewers like you who makes this one of the top most watched broadcasts on WHC TV. So thank you and cheers. This is Princess Bola Adelani, the total success coach, reminding you to keep smiling. Hey, put a smile on your face. Life's too short, you know. Keep learning, keep believing, keep networking, and keep on keeping on. You're on the winning side. I look forward to seeing you next month. Take care. God bless. Bye. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>